Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. So for today's video, we're talking about my luxury beauty favorites from the month of July. And it is basically all Chanel except for one item. But before we go any further, let's take a second to grab our iced coffee or a hot coffee. Let's take a sip and let's get started. As many of you know, I now have an online beauty consulting service, which is a one-on-one -on -one video chat where you get my undivided attention and you can talk to me about any beauty concerns you might have. What's interesting is most people already have all the products they could ever need or dream of. Sometimes it's just using them in the correct order or getting some coaching tips one-on-one -on -one that helps you out. So you may not even need to buy anything. So if you want to make an appointment, click the link in the description box down below. All right, so my favorites from July. I can't believe it's already August. I definitely liked a lot of new items. There were a lot of new collections, specifically from Chanel. I can think of three that happened uh, in the month of July, back to back to back to back. And here we are. So I do have a lot of new favorites here. Sometimes with the monthly favorites, I have like old favorites and like old faithful, but today is basically all brand spanking new. So first up from Chanel, we have the factory number no. five. This is the hundred year celebration of the famous or infamous number no. five perfume. So we had the celebration, the factory collection, and I picked up a few items before everything sold out. I've been looking online periodically, looking to see if there are going to be any restocks because I thought by now that there would have been a restock. I haven't seen any, but so something happens sometimes with marketing. Items will sell out and then two weeks later they'll say, oh, we have a restock, which means that they never actually sold out because in order to get turnaround of having new products made or shipped to different locations, it usually takes six to eight weeks. So when it's a real restock, when they genuinely sell out of everything and then they get a new shipment in, it usually takes several weeks for that to happen. Anytime a brand tells you that they have a restock three days after they sold out, it's just a marketing technique. So I think they genuinely actually sold out of a lot of items, but I'm still looking at the number five collection for a few pieces that I like to get backups of. The first one being my number five water bottle. This is number five L'eau de Chanel. Uh, it's L'eau, L'eau, which L'eau means water. So it's a glass water bottle here with this rubber sleeve. It's absolutely beautiful. I love it. I think it's so classy and so iconic. I would love to get a backup of this here. However, I really should just appreciate what I have because I think this is precious and wonderful and I know a lot of people were not able to get their hands on the water bottle and a lot of you messaged me that you saw this on eBay. You know those websites where people sell items? Um, some of these were going for over a thousand dollars, so I'm gonna keep mine very close. If I can find one online on a actual reputable website like Chanel, I'll get a backup, but I'm not gonna go on the eBay route because that's just way too much. I can't believe that there are scalpers out there that buy products in like large quantities just to resell. I mean, I, I know it exists, but it just seems so like, ugh. You should leave those items for people like us who are obsessed with the brand. Maybe there'll be a restock. I really, really hope that there will be. Uh, so the next item I got from the number five factory is the soap. So this is the classic number five soap, but in a different tin. And this smells so good. It smells like number five, so flowery, so powdery, so clean. And I swear there's like a hint of bubble gum. Every time I smell number five, I get like a hint of like the powdery, residue on a piece of bubble gum. That's what I smell. So this smells so nice and you don't even have to open it all the way. Like if you just open it a crack, you get this waft of flowery perfume. 
I'm not sure what to use this as once I use up the soap, maybe to hold some jewelry or maybe hold some makeup or just have it as a wonderful little display here. This is a metal tin, so it's nice. It'll be good for travel to put things in because it is metal, so things won't get squished or crushed inside. Next up is low hand cream. So this came in the mystery cone and this is the regular number five low hand cream. I like low version of number five. It's lighter, it's fresher, it's a bit softer and the hand cream is so nice. I wasn't certain how perfumed it would be, but it's actually a nice subtle fragrance. It does not interfere with your regular perfume so you can mix and match. It's not going to overpower or overwhelm what you're wearing already as a fragrance. And I just love this little pod. It looks so chic. It fits so nicely in your hand and it's so easy to open. You just twist like this, very effortless. In the mystery home, there was also a Chanel glass nail file, which is just the perfect size, especially for keeping in your purse or things like that. I like that it has a sheath as well, so it's not just a nail file that's just loose in your handbag. It's nice that it has a cover. And then the last item in my mystery cone is my Chanel number no. five towel here. I have yet to find a purpose for this. Uh, part of me wants to keep this pristine until the end of time. Uh, I don't exactly know what to do with it except decorative purposes, beautiful photos, and videos on Instagram. So if you have any suggestions as to what to do with my number no. five hand towel, I guess I could leave it out when we start having guests again if I want to be extremely extra, but I don't think I want just anyone using my <laughs> number five towel. Oh, and something else I forgot to mention in my package for the factory number five, I actually had two packages, but I received these Chanel number no. five birthday candles. I don't think that these are scented. I haven't opened the package yet, but I think they're really cute. Uh, it's black and white. I do wish there was a little number no. five logo here somewhere, but I think it's really precious and it's nice to get, you know, little freebies from Chanel whenever they feel like it. All right, moving on to what I'm wearing on my eyes today. So recently Chanel published or published, no, they released or launched a purple cool toned eyeshadow palette, which we have not seen in years. This is the palette here called Douceur et Serenité, and it is exactly that, purple and cool toned. I am wearing a mixture of all four shades today. I think that this is a beautiful palette. It is exactly what I wanted. It finally scratched that itch that I've had for so many years. The formula is beautiful. It's the exact same quality and performance that we're used to with Chanel. You get a really beautiful combination of light satin finish eyeshadows and there's one matte the lightest color is a matte the rest are just beautiful satin formulas i do wish that maybe instead of a dark gray we had another purple color but i am wearing the dark gray today and it actually does look quite nice it's not too dark you could of course always make this a smoky eye if you wanted to but I think it's really lovely. Around the same time, Chanel decided to reformulate their waterproof liners. These are the Stilo Yeux, and a lot of us were concerned because sometimes when Chanel decides to reformulate items, the formula is different and we don't really like it or appreciate it, but I have to say, the new formulation of the waterproof liners, in my opinion, is kind of the exact same. I received a few comments from people saying they felt they were a little bit drier. I personally haven't experienced that. I have a lot of the older formula and I have some of the newer formula. And if I didn't know that these were a new formula, I would not know the difference whatsoever. So the colors that I got are number 42, Gris Graphite, number 46, Var Emeraude, number 48, Art Antique, and number 36, Prune Intense. I got an eclectic variation of colors here. There was no real rhyme or reason. I just wanted a combination of warm and cool toned colors. I think that the Prune Intense 
goes lovely with this purple color here but i could also pull with the gray liner if i wanted to go even more gray and silvery i picked shades that i knew would just mix in really nicely with the colors and the eyeshadows that i already own and when i did my review of these liners here i also did some eyeshadow uh, matches or pairs so i will leave a link to that video in the description box i just recommended like this liner to go with that eyeshadow i just thought that would be helpful because i know a lot of you collect as you go just like i do so if you happen to get a few of these eyeliners you probably have eyeshadows at home that will wear nicely with these these are waterproof they don't smudge they don't flake off they really just stay in place all day and as far as the longevity the wear i have not noticed a difference in anything the only thing i think i've noticed a slight difference is, is maybe when i'm removing it at night i find that these hold on a little bit longer for some reason they just seem to linger a little bit more so i just have to gently remove the eye makeup just a hint more but i'm really splitting hairs here i genuinely don't think that there's a difference with a new formulation so rest assured all right moving on now we have the fall collection from chanel yes we've already received the fall collection and i'm wearing some of it right now so first to discuss in the fall release this year we have not seen a new eyeshadow palette which is fine by me because like i just bought one i have seen promotions of the purple palette that we just talked about as a re-promotion with the fall collection so if you're looking or waiting to see a new uh, for eyeshadow palette for the fall release from Chanel it's not going to happen what they've done instead is a new collection of liquid eyeshadows and contour sticks so what they've done instead is they've introduced these Stilo Ombre Contour which already exists in the brand but these are new colors here so these are eyeshadows and eyeliners two-in-one you can see that the tips are pretty tapered so you can use it as eyeliner but it's also an eyeshadow. So I got the shade Contour Beige and then also Contour Graphite. Again, I wanted a combination of warm and cool tone here. I've worn both of these recently in videos and they're really lovely. The texture is wonderful, very creamy, very easy to blend. They also don't move. They're not waterproof per se, but they just are very long wearing and they're very, very easy to blend, very user friendly. You could very easily have a look with just one product. You just scribble on some color, blend, use it as liner and a mascara and you're done. But I also like to use these as layering. So either putting a powder eyeshadow over top or a liquid shadow. So these are the liquid eyeshadows that I mentioned. Now liquid eyeshadows are not new to Chanel, but these colors are here. So the first one is number 37, Lame Acier. And the second one is number 35, Lame Pourpre. You can very easily see my strategy, warm and cool. So the warm color looks like a foiled gold cranberry it is a beautiful color it is absolutely stunning i found that the darker color here requires a little bit more work in blending that being said it's worth it the color the finish is absolutely beautiful it's so stunning it definitely looks like a fall color just like a golden leaf or a red leaf with some gold on it. Just picture a red maple leaf with some gold on it and just gives you that perfect image of fall foliage. It's really beautiful. I've worn it again a few more times after filming my first video and it's really worth it. It does just require a bit more blending because these are waterproof and these are also budge proof. So when you wear these, you have to apply one eye at a time. You can't just swipe and swipe because whatever shape you apply this is going to stay like that all day. So you just swipe with one eye and then you get your brush and blend. Trust me. And since it's so dark, you can clearly see where the shadow ends and begins. A lot of the other eyeshadows that I have in this format are sheer like champagne colors that are just like a wash of color. So they don't matter as much. This requires a bit more blending, but it actually is worth it. And it's not that hard. It's just 
a bit more work than I'm used to, so I wanted to let you know up front. And then the second color here is the silver smoky gray color. I just did a tutorial on this one for like a gray smoky eye look. It's so beautiful, it's cool toned, and the finish of these, it's shimmery, but it's not a chunky glitter, and just the nature of the finish, because it goes from liquid to dry, gives you like a metallic foiled finish, it looks so beautiful. I used this in conjunction with, I think, two other eye products just to make a very extra look, but you could easily just use one product and a mascara, and it always looks like you've done much more work than you actually did, which is always the goal. And then the last item from the fall release here is number 905 Brun Fumé, which is one of their new nail colors, and it's what I'm wearing today. This, I believe, is day four. It's holding up really nicely. I will put a post in my community tab when I have seven days of wear to give you a final review, but so far I think the color is beautiful. The wear has been really nice so far. I did buy this nail color online, so I was hopeful that everything would be exactly what I want because sometimes a nail color, depending on your skin tone, doesn't always work for you, but this is a really beautiful dark, creamy, khaki, brown, with a hint of gray. I think it's a fabulous color. Did I say that the nail color was the last item in the fall release? That was a lie. The last item in the fall release is a new blush. This is the Joux Contrast number 608 Ambre, and it's the blush that I'm wearing today. So I bought this online, and I had high hopes. I was like, please work. I was worried that it would be too pale or gray or I don't you know who knows what's going to happen because online photos and like real life photos and videos are very different however it's so beautiful it really is your cheek but better you do need to add a little bit more color like some shades like so close that beautiful orange tangerine color or that red like rouge profond those are very intense blushes. You really just need to dip in very lightly with your brush and you get the color payoff you want. This one I do swirl my brush in a few times to get this finish here, but I really like it. it it's like my cheek color, but better. It's very light, natural, it's neutral, it's not too warm, not too cool, it's just somewhere in the middle. What's interesting is the finish is more matte. I'm used to seeing like a soft, satiny finish from these Chanel blushes, but this is more matte. So if you wanna add a highlighter, you can. I did go ahead and add one just very lightly today, but the finish is a bit different, so you should be aware of that, but I don't really care. I think it's absolutely beautiful and it's exactly what I wanted. I'm very happy with the blush. Okay, so those are all of my luxury beauty favorites from Chanel from the month of July. And then I have one last item here, and this is from Chantecai. This was sent to me in PR, but these are my own thoughts. And this is their new orange water. So I've known about this for several months because I have very good sources. This is similar to the Rose de May facial water, but this one is orange blossom water. So when I saw this, I thought it was going to be very zesty, like orange, citrusy, lime, that sort of thing, but it's really the orange blossom. So don't buy the orange flower water thinking it's going to be a zesty, invigorating orange juice in a spray. It's not at all. It really reminds me of a calming cup of herbal tea, like chamomile with orange blossoms. It's really nice. And a lot of people have asked me the difference between this and the Rose de May facial mist. First of all, this comes in a metal spray can, and I think you actually get more product in this versus the Rose de May facial mist. Also, the Rose de May is in a glass bottle, and I would say that the Rose de May for me is a bit more uplifting and refreshing. I find it a bit more calming in a way, but I like both. If I had to repurchase only one, I don't know which one I would repurchase. I really like it. At first I wasn't sure because I really am a fan of the Rose de May face mist and I wasn't certain if I was going to be replacing it, but I really like both and they're both permanent. It, this is not like a summer release. It's part of the permanent collection. I think I might repurchase this one. I don't know. I, I like both, but anyway, let me just mist myself lightly here. 
So anyway, this is my roundup of my luxury beauty favorites from the month of July. It was very Chanel heavy, but mm, that's my channel, isn't it? I hope you enjoyed today's video. Let me know what were some of your favorites from the past month, any beauty favorites. Were there any in today's video that you liked the most? Sound off in the comments. If you're new to my channel or if you happen to watch my channel but are not yet subscribed, which I know a lot of you are, I highly recommend that you take the time to subscribe, give this video a like, and leave a comment. That's a great way to encourage me here on my channel. So on that note, I think this is all I have for you guys for today. Thank you all so much for stopping by. I hope you have a beautiful day and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.